Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Brook Tesfai. This is Safe Zone. Today we're going to be um, reviewing uh, some of the features of the Nikon Z9. More precisely, uh, we are going to be looking at the menu items and what's in there. Uh, describe some of the features that I like to turn on and turn off. Um, and uh, yeah, so let's get right to it. Uh, we are going to start, hit the menu uh, button. So the first thing that comes up and a little bit different from the Nikon Z62, uh, uh, which I have right here, is the first item in the menu is not the playback um, uh, menu item, but it's the photo shooting menu, which is uh, pretty good actually, because when I, when, when I want to go into the menu, it's typically to change something in the settings while I'm doing a shoot. So. I like the fact that it's starting with the photo shooting menu and I don't have to scroll down to get to the uh, photo shooting menu. So that's the first thing that comes up. That comes up. And um, the first item in this menu is the shooting menu bank. Now, if you are used to having a um, setting of um, personalities for your um, different shooting um, scenarios, uh, and the Z6 II, Z6, Z7 II uh, are all the same, um, same with all the Z's, I believe, so far. Uh, you, you, well, not, not all the Z's, I shouldn't say that. Uh, the Z6, uh, Z7, Z6 II, and Z7 II, uh, uh, um, you have these uh, options, U1, U2, U3, where you can save um, um, some presets that you would like to start with when, whenever you uh, turn a dial uh, to, to, um, to one of those settings, to, 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 to one of those options. So you can set it, you know, U1 for sports, for example, or landscape, and U2 for portrait and that kind of stuff. So you don't have the same thing on the Z9. Um, on the Z9, what you can use if you would like to have some of the similar settings where you store, um, you know, your your starting point, let's say, uh, for a given scenario, be it sports, portrait, or landscape, you can save it in this um, menu um, bank. Uh, doesn't exactly work the same way as on the Z62 or the uh, the other Zs, uh, but um, it's it's definitely something that uh, you can uh, uh, use for for that purpose. So in mine, I have, for example, A set to landscape, and one of the nice things about this is you can name um, these uh, settings whatever you want. Um, you know, just by going uh, into it, and then uh, there's a rename option there. You can also copy, as you can see. So it's nice to have um, some presets that you uh, like to start with for different scenarios. I have landscape on A, uh, portrait on B, uh, sports on C, and HDR on D, for example, in this case here. Um, I just got the, uh, the camera a couple of days ago, so I'm still learning some of these menu items myself. Uh, but uh, this is the setting that I, um, that I you know, at least pr uh, right now, uh, the setting that makes the most sense to me. I may change it as, you know, as I, um, as I use the camera and, and uh, my needs evolve, I may change some of these settings, but this is how I have it set up for now. Um, so if we go down to the extended menu uh, banks, if you don't know what an, uh, an I a menu item does, uh, the nice thing, whether it's on this camera or on the other Zs as well, uh, is an icon does is in the menu system, you have the, the little question mark that appears at the top uh, right corner. And when you see that, that means there's a description that you can get to by um, pressing a button on the on the back of the camera, which is the magnifying uh, minus uh, button, right next to it, uh, there's a question mark. So that's that that that's prompting you to to press that button if you would like to get more description on the item. So if I do that in this case, for example, right here it says it tells me what the extending menu bank is. Okay, and when you turn it on or when you turn it off. Okay, so that's that's the kind the kind of stuff that you can do. Not not all of the menu items have that question mark next to them, but most of them do. Um, so that's something that you can uh, get to very easily if uh, you need to remember what a particular menu item does. Uh, going down the storage folder, that's where you set up your uh, uh, folder on your um, memory card. Um, so I, you can rename this too. Uh, if you go to the right, um, there's a rename option, okay? You can um, 
start, you know, you can say it starts at this number, or you can change the number, or you can select a particular number uh, folder that you've saved. Uh, below that is the file naming. So that's the actual file name for the pictures that you're taking. Um, so if you wanted to start with a sequence of uh, letters, uh, this is where you do it. File naming, and you can rename that. I name mine S uh, Z nine, um, and then uh, four digit uh, numbers after that. All right. After uh, below that is the role played by card in slot two. This is where you select uh, what uh, if you have two cards in in there, what you want the second card to do. Whether it is to uh, shoot overflow in overflow mode, meaning you want to uh, if the slot one becomes full, it goes automatically to sl slot two. You can also have it in backup where you are doing mirroring what you're doing in, uh, on, on card one on card two so you're backing it up um, and then you can shoot jpeg on one roll on the other etc and vice versa so that's where you set this up i have it set up on overflow in my case um, image area image area is where you select your um, different uh, crop mode if you want to have uh, it crop from the sensor uh, I have mine on FX, which is the full uh, frame, uh, 36 by 24. Uh, you can choose DX uh, if you need to um, uh, have a further reach, like let's say you're shooting uh, wildlife using a zoom lens, but you are not quite there where you want. You can um, use a crop uh, mode where it gets you a little bit um, uh, closer. Um, there's a one-to-one -one, uh, and a 16 by nine, which is nice when you want to shoot movies, for example, or even pictures. I use it sometimes, um, like the 16:9 format. You have the DX crop alert on and off. I have it on on. Um, what that is is basically if you have, for example, um, changed your uh, crop mode to DX and you're shooting, and you forgot to go back to FX mode. If you want a little reminder that tells you that you are in DX mode, um, then you can set that up and then there's a little flashing uh, uh, icon, um, the image area icon will be flashing on the screen. So that's what that's for. Um, going down, uh, image quality, I have it set to RAW, but you can set it to RAW plus JPEG if you shoot uh, RAW plus JPEG or JPEG only. Uh, you have different combinations you can choose from. Um, so that's what that's for. So for example, if you shoot raw plus JPEG, fine, uh, that would be the option you choose. In that case, you see that the image size is now highlighted because that's for your JPEG image size that you choose this uh, large, medium or small. If you shoot uniquely in raw, then uh, you uh, that option will be grayed out because you, don't, you won't need it. Uh, raw recording, uh, this is where you set what kind of compression you want for your raw recording. I have it set to lossless compression, which is uh, the best I hear, so that's where I have mine set. I'm not too familiar with the other uh, two options, as a matter of fact, uh, but uh, uh, let's see what the uh, question mark description says for this, for example. Okay, lossless compression, high efficiency and high efficiency. So for um, file size increases in the order, high efficiency, uh, lossless compression in terms of image quality, uh, high efficiency is nearly identical to lossless compression. High efficiency produces higher quality pictures than high efficiency. No, high efficiency star produces higher uh, quality pictures than high efficiency. Okay, so um, doesn't say much uh, in terms of what exactly uh, it is. So you just have to try it if you want to use uh, these settings. But uh, I just will leave mine on lossless compression. Uh, next up is ISO sensitivity. Uh, this camera can now go to ISO 64, uh, which is the uh, native ISO, uh, not uh, 100, for example, which is on the Z62. Um, so that's where you select your uh, ISO sensitivity setting. Um, all right, so nothing uh, to say further about that. Uh, auto ISO sensitivity control. I like to turn that on, especially when I'm in an uh, indoor situation um, and you want the ISO to be automatically set by the camera depending on uh, you know, the setting you have for aperture and, um, and uh, uh, shutter speed. 
So uh, you can set it on or off. Uh, if you have it on, like I do here, you see that there are some options below where you can choose the maximum sensitivity uh, that you would like to uh, the auto settings to, to, to set for you. Meaning that, for example, if you leave it on auto and you don't want to, uh, you don't want to um, the camera to go for a very high ISO, which is, let's say 25,000 or, or, uh, or more, um, you would set it here to what the maximum ISO you are willing to tolerate is. Basically, that's what how to think about this. So I have mine set to 12,800. Uh, these, these cameras are very good, good in low light um, in terms of noise. And you know, there's a lot of noise reduction uh, 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 software out there that you can use uh, uh, to to address any noise issues. Um, so 12,800 12, should be pretty good there. Uh, maximum sensitivity with flash, you can set it there if you would like, if you want a different sensitivity setting when you have the flash on. Um, minimum shutter speed, um, that's, I'm, I'm, I set it to 1 60th of a second, but you can definitely change it there, okay? Um, so that's, uh, for your ISO sensitivity setting. White balance, you have the option of auto, and do you have different si the kinds of auto, auto zero, one, or two. Zero is uh, keep white, keep white, reduce warm colors. Uh, auto one, where I have it, is, is keep overall atmosphere, which I, I, I like that. And auto two is keep warm lighting uh, colors. Um, so if you have it on auto, we have these options. And then, of course, you have uh, all the other uh, options for flash, fluorescent, incandescent, shade, cloudy, and all that. Um, moving down, a set picture control. That's where you set your uh, picture control uh, um, presets. You can do auto. You can do standard, um, neutral, vivid, monochrome, portrait, landscape, flat. Or you have some of the... Uh, the new creative picture uh, controls, especially for um, when you're shooting a video, these are pretty uh, pretty awesome because uh, they um, give you some nice uh, um, settings you can use. Uh, I haven't tried this myself, but it's a good idea and uh, give it a try at some point. Sepia, blue, toy, pure, melancholic, a bunch of different settings that you can uh, that you can set right here. All right. I'll leave mine on standard for now. Um, and then manage uh, picture control. I believe uh, you can load some uh, some some presets um, that you can probably, uh, or you can even save your own um, on here and then load them uh, on demand. So that's what that is for. There's a question mark so we can look at it just in case I'm wrong about that. but. Uh, it says create a new custom picture control based on existing preset or custom uh, picture control. Contrast, saturation, and other settings can be adjusted individually before the picture control is saved. So that's exactly what that is for. Okay. Uh, color space, leave it on sRGB is what I do. Adobe RGB is another option. Active D, active D lighting. Now this setting only applies to, uh, to JPEG. Um, and uh, if you shoot raw, um, it doesn't apply to it uh, as far as I know. Uh, but um, I usually have it set to normal. And this is uh, active delighting is where the camera um, fills in some of those shadow uh, points or um, affects both the, shadow, the, the shadows and the highlights actually. So, it, or, or, or if it's um, on the highlights, it will kind of uh, reduce the, some of the, the, those, those highlights. That's uh, you're letting the camera make that choice for you. And it, which, which could be nice if, if you're in a contrasty scene um, and you can set that to, depending on the contrast, the amount of contrast in the scene, you can set it to high, extra high, uh, or auto, low, or off, if you don't want to use that. But again, that only affects the, uh, the, the J, JPEG uh, uh, images if you're saving uh, JPEG on your uh, uh, one of your cards. Uh, long exposure noise reduction, I have that set to on. You can, I actually have this on my quick uh, eye menu that I talked about can talk about the i menu um, later, but it's basically where you can have your set of. Um, if I go too quickly to the i, you see you can basically change any of these settings here um, to whatever you want uh, quick access to. So 
I, I typically would have that uh, included, included in there so that I can uh, turn it on or off quickly um, because sometimes you may not want to have it can take some time uh, if you're shooting in low light. Um, I, I think the shutter speed is has to be very slow to get into that to begin with. Uh, I don't exactly remember the, the number, but maybe it says it right in the description, but it does not. But um, so when you shoot in low shutter speeds, um, the the uh, um, uh, the uh, camera will apply a noise reduction automatically in there, which is a good idea, but sometimes it may be inconvenient if you are trying to uh, shoot the next picture and you're, you have to wait until it saves. I actually have not run into this uh, with this camera. I have not tried it, to, to be fair, this camera, but on the Z6 II, um, uh, you know, I've, had, I've, I've run into uh, that situation. So you can turn it on or off. High ISO uh, NR, noise reduction, that's where I keep it at normal, but you can have it at high, low, or off. That's when you shoot in high ISO for the camera to uh, apply some noise reduction in camera uh, for you. Um, that's where you set that. Um, vignette control uh, is where, no, let's see, high ISO, uh, to go back to that, I don't know if you should in RAW, if that makes any uh, difference or not, because I imagine that's just for JPEGs, but uh, I could be wrong there. Uh, vignette control, um, I have it set to normal, that's just uh, uh, if you want a little bit of vignette, uh, lens vignetting uh, around the edges of your, uh, your, your frame, uh, which could be nice. Diffraction compensation, this is pretty neat. Um, as you uh, shoot in um, those uh, very small apertures, uh, f11 and beyond, you can lose in sharpness. Um, it's a well-known effect. Uh, so, this what this does is it compensates or or it corrects for that uh, for that loss in sharpness. So it compensates for it. Uh, let's see if uh, uh, the uh, the question mark the description says anything about it. it emphasizes outlines to compensate for loss of uh, definition at small apertures, high f numbers. There are diffraction diffraction compensation options in both the photo shooting and video recording mode. So yeah, so that's uh, what that does. And it's, um, I like to turn it on. Um, auto, uh, auto distortion control, that's uh, if you're, especially you, if you're using wide, uh, wide lenses, um, you can have some uh, barrel distortion uh, where, um, you know, things uh, get distorted, especially in, on the, uh, if you have some of your subject uh, on the edge of that uh, lens. So that corrects for that. You can also correct it uh, very easily on uh, in Lightroom and whatever editing program you use. Um, photo flicker reduction, that's when you uh, use it indoors uh, in under, well, it doesn't have to be indoors, I suppose, but under certain lighting conditions where there could be flicker, um, especially for video, I suppose, as well uh, as, 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 as pictures. But, uh, uh, I don't know how it affects pictures, as a matter of fact, but um, uh, it's some certain LED lightings can cause some flicker, depending on also your shutter speed, I believe. So that is uh, what uh, this will uh, reduce. Uh, if you go into the description, the shutter is released when the effects of flicker are at their lowest. Shutter release timing is affected by external factors, resulting in a tendency to increase shutter lag and a reduced frame advance rate. So it doesn't go much into it, but uh, I have it turned off and you just turn it on when you need it. Metering, I have it set to uh, matrix metering, which I believe is uh, pretty awesome. Uh, but if you need to, sometimes you um, can do a center weight of metering or spot metering if you uh, need to meter a specific uh, 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 part of your subject. And then there's highlight weighted metering too. If you don't want to burn out uh, your highlights, you can select that. Flash control, it's grayed out. So we'll skip that. Uh, it's going to control your flash, obviously. Uh, and focus mode, I have it currently a, a continuous autofocus, but you can, uh, depending on your uh, situation, you may want to choose single autofocus or manual focus, but Continuous autofocus works really good in most cases. Um, 
autofocus area mode is the where you choose uh, your autofocus area. Uh, you can go to from pinpoint all the way to auto area autofocus where it actually selects um, the area of focus for you. The camera does an excellent job at that, so I uh, would leave it there. I would be comfortable leaving it there. This camera is really, really great for that. But you also have your th 3D tracking. You have your wide area F uh, autofocus large. There's a wide area large and wide area small if you um, you know, if uh, the subject that you want that you want to select is not being selected, you can uh, reduce the uh, the area uh, to a smaller area and have it autofocus just in that area. So that's really helpful in certain situations. Okay, so let's go back uh, to the next item is the AF subject detection options. This is pretty awesome. In this camera, you have a bunch of different. Um, uh, subject detection, uh, automatic subject detection options. You have people, you have animal, you have vehicle, but you also have auto where you can um, uh, let the camera decide what it is, whether it's uh, 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 an animal, a uh, vehicle, or a, uh, a person. So, um, and vehicle includes motorcycles, trains, and all that kind of uh, stuff. So. That's really great. Uh, I have it on people right now, but depending on the subject, that's where you would change it. And you can definitely, that's the kind of stuff you would have on your quick uh, selection, like the eye selection mode, uh, where you can get quickly get to these kind of settings. Vibration reduction, I have it set to on, which is really, really nice on this camera as well as the uh, Z6 II camera has its uh, own vibration reduction. So that's awesome. I leave it on on. If you're shooting sports, you can uh, um, go to sports. Auto bracketing is where you have you can set your bracketing options. Um, you can ha you have all these um, bracketing options. AE, uh, so that's exposure in flash bracketing, exposure only, flash bracketing, white balance bracketing, and ADL uh, 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 bracketing. So you have a bunch of different options there. Uh, Multiple exposure, uh, actually, did I skip something here? No, yeah, so and then you can select your uh, number of shots for your bracketing, three, five, etc. cetera. Uh, pretty normal there, increments, um, you know, how many, uh, how many uh, what's the step that you want to bracket, that you use for your bracket, so one EV uh, or, or less or more, um, is that where you would set that over here. And as long as you have an M0, it's not active. Multiple exposure. Um, I have that set to off right now, but this is an interesting one. This is, you can use this creatively, actually. Uh, and um, basically, what you can do is you can um, set, if you turn it on, uh, you can take different um, number of fixtures or different exposures uh, where you would take a picture of um, a, a, a given subject against a, a background, okay, which is lighter or darker, and you can take another one uh, of the ba of the, for a different background, and you can switch the background or just the subject um, uh, because you have these overlay modes, which are uh, add average lighten or darken. So depending on what you choose, I was talking about the lighten and darken, but uh, basically, it would choose uh, if you take several shots, it would choose for if you're if you're in lighten, it would pick. The, uh, the lighter pixels for one, uh, one uh, uh, exposure or one frame and put it on the other one, uh, etc. So uh, you can get pretty creative with that kind of stuff. And um, so that's what uh, multiple exposure uh, uh, is. And then after that, we have HDR overlay. Um, this is if you want to shoot a quick HDR where you're letting the camera itself do the merging for you in camera all that can happen um, now the downside with this is you end up with a jpeg merged uh, uh, picture so if you shoot raw uh, and that's not the option you want you would use a uh, regular bracketing and then do the uh, merging yourself uh, and uh, when you process the images or when you edit the images 
but if you want a qu quick HDR we have, when, where you have a contrasty scene and you don't mind getting the JPEG merged picture right from the camera, this is a good option. And you can turn it on. You can, you can turn it on for a series of uh, photos or for just a single uh, a picture you're taking. Uh, not a single, but um, a single set of pictures you're taking. Uh, HDR strength, you can um, select these. Now on the Z6 II, if I remember correctly, these were numbers. Here you have uh, extra high, high, normal, and low. Um, so that's where you choose here. Uh, or auto, you can let the uh, uh, camera uh, 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 make, make the choice for you. But that's um, depending on the contrast of the scene, you know, you would choose the, these various options here. Uh, now, if you do um, uh, shoot HDR overlay and you want to conserve or you want to keep your raw individual raw files that made up that uh, HDR image, uh, you have an option to set that to on and you can um, uh, keep that. Um, uh, the raw and then uh, um, try to do your own merging uh, afterwards as well on uh, um, when you process the images so that's another option um, but uh, really the auto bracketing is what you would use for HDR um, for um, you know should have a lot better control of the HDR itself this HDR overlay I don't believe is very um, I mean it's a qu nice quick option to have but um, it's not as great as, as what you can do yourself. Uh, inter interval timer shooting, this is where you would, um, if you want to do interval shooting, um, you can set, have your settings here, how, you know, how often to, 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 exp to, to shoot and uh, how many uh, shots, etc. You can all um, set that up over there. Uh, time lapse video, great option to have. Um, uh, and you can uh, set it up right here. Uh, focus shifting sh uh, shooting. If you want to do a focus shifting sh a shot where you want to uh, move your focus uh, or shift your focus point uh, as you shoot, uh, you can set that up here, and you can have the you can set the number of shots, uh, uh, the focus steps. So uh, you know, do you want to um, actually there's the width and the uh, depth, I believe here, narrow, wide. Um, interval until next shot yeah so this is the yeah so this is the focus step step uh whether you have a a very large um step that you want to use meaning uh deep deep uh, um uh steps or or uh, narrower that's this is where you set set that i'm not saying that right but uh, you know what i mean i believe uh okay um let's oops what did I do? What did I do? Uh, I don't know what I did. I guess I did some interval shooting because I... All right, let's stop that nonsense. Okay. All right. Um, let's go back to where we were, which is focus shift shooting. All right. So, uh, that, and that's the end of the photo shooting um, menu. Uh, so we, we went through uh, pretty much all of that, the options that you have. Uh, there. Um, I believe that's where I will stop it here for today uh, because it will be a very long, long video if uh, we go into every single option for video. Um, the custom settings has pretty nice options for focus, um, but uh, in the interest of time, uh, let us, uh, let us uh, uh, keep it short for today and then we'll uh, maybe uh, make another video uh, about the uh, custom settings um, another time. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy it. Don't forget to like and subscribe as it helps a lot. Thank you. We'll see you another time.